What's up, you guys? <laughs> Let's scoot back a little bit so I'm not all up in your face. But today, I am so excited about this video because it involves two of my very favorite things, and that is food and working out. <laughs> oh, I need a hobby. <laughs> all right, so first in the video, um, I'm gonna go over one of my favorite recipes, and that is the no mayo tuna salad. That's a thing, yes, that is a thing. <laughs> okay, so a lot of people ask me, Paige, what do you eat? Paige, what do you snack on? That's such a common thing. And this basically covers the food that I eat and snacks, because you can kind of do whatever you want with it. It's low carb, high protein, and it has tons of good fat. It also has minimal ingredients. It takes minimal time, so it's definitely a win-win. So we're gonna make that, and then after we're done making that, I'll meet you right back here and go over the inner thigh workout. <laughs> What's up, you guys? So I have been getting a lot of requests on doing healthy snacks, or what I keep in my fridge to snack in between meals. And I'm gonna show you guys how to make a healthy, no mayo tuna salad. There's many different ways that you can make a tuna salad, so get creative. Um, I'm gonna show you guys what I do and why, and it's super easy, super quick. I already have kind of everything almost ready to go. So um, if you look here, I have chopped onions, carrots, bell peppers, and celery, all right? So we're just gonna basically add everything to a big bowl. So I cut up two stalks of celery. It's gonna go in there. And then I did a half of bell pepper. You can use any bell pepper that you want, or any type of pepper that you want. Um, if you like the red, if you like the orange, I like the yellow the most. Also, I'm doing carrots. I also shredded some and I chopped some up because I kind of like um, crunchy and a little bit of like not so crunchy. And then we did an onion and I did one third of an onion, just diced it up, ready to go. With my tuna salad, I like to keep it as low calorie as I can. You can add things like dried fruit, mixed nuts, all that good stuff, and that works amazing in a tuna salad, but it's gonna add extra fat and extra carbs. So if you don't care about that, add whatever you want, get creative with it, it's your tuna salad. But if you add vegetables and stuff like this, then you're gonna keep it as low calorie, low fat, low carb as possible. Now for the cans of tuna. Um, I'm doing three cans of tuna. You can add more if you like more tuna or less. You, literally, you can just kind of get creative with it. One thing I wanted to point out though is when you buy tuna, make sure you get in water and then I like to do no salt added. So in water because you can get your tuna in oil. Obviously that's gonna add more fat to your, your tuna salad. So, we are just going to do this. Perfect. It's looking good. Now you just are gonna wanna kinda press your tuna down. Kinda just get it cause it's, so it's kinda piecey. But remember, the more colorful the food, the better. So this has got lots of color gonna have lots of flavor. See how there's a lot of vegetables? If you like more tuna in yours, you can add maybe another can. I might add one more can. But if you wanna add just more veggies, I mean, you can kinda get creative with it, make it your own. One thing I know for sure when cooking is you can always add more, but you can't add less. So it's always best when you make anything like I just did. Add three cans, mix it around, and then you're like, hmm, you know what, I think I want four cans. And then just add another one because if you do four and then you're like, oh my gosh, there's too much, you can't take it back. Now this is looking magnificent. So I'm gonna show you a really easy way to make it. All you need is lemon juice, soy sauce, Dijon mustard and olive oil. You're also just gonna need some salt and pepper for flavor. 
Okay, now you need a measuring cup, one third, and then a tablespoon. Remember, start less, add more if you need it. We're gonna do one third cup of olive oil. And tuna salad is just so good with everything. It's good with like vegetables, it's good with toast. You can put it with lettuce wraps if you're doing low carb. Um, it's just really good snack to keep in the fridge. High in protein, low in fat, low in carbs. All right, so now we're gonna do some lemon juice. Lemon juice, we're gonna do, again, start small and add more if you need it. We're gonna do two tablespoons. Now for low sodium soy sauce, we're gonna do two tablespoons of this as well. This is gonna act as our mayo. Perfect. Now for Dijon mustard, we're gonna put one tablespoon. Again, you can always add more, but one heaping tablespoon. We're just gonna add this to our tuna salad mix. And that's literally all you do. I would taste it now after we mix it and then add your salt and pepper and then taste it and add a little bit more and then taste it and add a, add a little bit more. There's a lot of things you can also add to this if you want it to be like a little bit spicy. You can add like a paprika or like a um, chipotle chili powder or you, I like to use, I, I like to leave it just kind of basic, put it in my fridge and then depending on how I feel that day or what I'm gonna eat it with, you can add different seasonings to make it taste different. Then you can kind of like have a different tuna salad every day. All right, let's try it. Oh my God, okay. Let's add some pepper. She knows that this is amazing. Let's add some salt. Mm. Now that is amazing. I'm glad that I added that extra can of tuna. It just is perfect. And there you go. No mayo tuna salad. Damn. Is it good? That's really good. You're really good, right? That's really good. I love adding the celery and the bell peppers to the tuna because Tuna is like kind of like a mushy texture and it gives you kind of like a crunch. So what I like to do is put this in between two pieces of gluten-free bread and you have a healthy snack or lunch. Um, good carbs, good proteins, healthy fats because we're using olive oils and super easy. Hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Wow. And we are back just Watching that makes me so hungry. Get in my belly! Because I know how good that tastes. If you guys make that recipe, you guys have to let me know in the comment section below. Moving on to the inner thigh workout. I'm really, really excited to share this workout with you guys. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide. Diving into the inner thigh. As we know, we have the glutes, we have the hamstrings, we have the quads, and one thing that is neglected is the inner thigh. There are a few different ways that you can target the inner thigh. That's by doing things like the adductor movement. So when you are bringing your leg close to the body, so you're adducting, look, inner thigh breaking out. <laughs> but when you are bringing the leg close to your body, that's adducting. So adducting means you're adding the body part to your body. So when we go into the gym, we have we have arm day, we have back, we have shoulders, but why not have an adductor day, an inner thigh day? You know, we have glutes, we have hamstrings, we have quads, but a lot of people don't know that your quad is the biggest muscle, and then it's your inner thigh, it's your adductor, and then it's your hamstring. So you're actually your hamstring is last when it comes to um, muscle size. So if you were to think about it like that, then you should be training your adductors more then you're training your hamstrings. The only thing that people really do to work their inner thigh is the adductor machine in the gym. And that doesn't fully hit 
your inner thigh. A sumo stance is a great way to target your inner thigh. When you think about working the inner thigh, you wanna think of your adduction movement, you wanna think of a sumo squat stance, and you wanna think about your unilateral movement. I'm really, really excited to share with you this inner thigh workout. It's so good, you guys are gonna love it. All right, to start your inner thigh workout, we're gonna start with our warm up. You're gonna take two bands. I like to do two bands because it's gonna add mega resistance to this, and we really wanna activate our legs for this workout. We're gonna place one band just slightly above our knee, then we're gonna place the other band just at our ankles. Now, if you get the band set that's on the description below, it does come with different resistances. I use the extra heavy and heavy, but if you are a beginner, please just start with the light and work your way up because these burn your gluteus maximus like Crazy. We're gonna start with the band side steps. So it's just a simple step to the side and remember that when you step, you don't want your feet to touch completely. So you're gonna step, bring your foot a little bit in, step, bring your other foot a little bit in, and you're gonna do that all the way down and all the way back. So about 10 reps down, 10 reps back, and you're gonna do that two times. Next up, we have band walks again. You're going to want to keep the bands where they are at your ankles and above your knee. And we're just going to squat down and step down, bringing your feet close together, counting to 10 until you get all the way down, and then counting to 10 backwards. Next up, we have the laying adductors. So keep the bands where they are, just lay down on your back. I would like for you to make sure that your neck and your head are just facing upwards. You can even put your hands behind your head for some support. And we're just going to bring our legs out for 20 reps. Each of these warm-ups, we're gonna want to do two times. Once you're completed, so that's six different rounds, we're gonna move straight into our workout. All right, to start our workout, we're gonna start with the goblet squat. You're gonna take one dumbbell. I would like for you to try to go as heavy as you can. Place it at your chest, sumo, with your legs out. So sumo means your legs are gonna be a little wider than shoulder width apart, and your feet are going to be slightly pointed outward. You're gonna be going down into a full squat and then up, and as you come up, just focus on squeezing those legs and that glute, and you're here for 10 reps. After you're done with your 10 reps on your goblet squat, just drop the weight to the ground, Pick the weight up from the top of the weight, and we're gonna move straight into a plie squat. A plie squat is we're gonna keep our sumo stance with our legs out wide and our toes slightly pointed out, and we're just gonna pulse squat here for 15 reps. A pulse squat is where you don't come up to a full squat, you're just up a little bit, and then you're back down. Up, down, up, down. Down. Just try to find your rhythm. Next up, we have weighted jump squats. Now these are tough, so just pick a weight that you think that you're gonna be able to do about 12 reps on and work your way up if you find out that that one's easier. So a jump squat, we're gonna keep our weight at our side and we're gonna just explode up as tall as we can. But just remember on that way back down, you really wanna brace yourself, catch yourself for a nice fall and back up into your jump squat. You're here for 12 reps, and you're gonna repeat this triple set for four rounds. Next triple set, we're gonna start with the sumo deadlift. Now you can use the same weight that you use for your goblet squat and your plie, but if you're feeling a little beast mode, you know you can grab a heavier weight. But this is a deadlift style, so you're just gonna place the weight at the ground in between your legs, keep that sumo stance, this is a sumo deadlift, with your legs wider than shoulder width and your toes slightly pointed out. You're gonna go reach down to grab the weight and deadlift it up, really focusing on squeezing those glutes as you come up and really squeezing those legs thrusting through and then back down to your starting position. You're gonna be here for 10 reps. 
second exercise in our triple set is a single leg RDL. Now this one requires a lot of balance and a lot of stability within your core. So if this is something that you need to do 5, 10, you know, 15 pounds to start with, please take your time and get the range of motion down before you think that you need to be holding a lot of weight. After you complete 12 reps with one leg, switch on to the next and complete 12 reps on the other leg. Following that, we have in and out jumps. So here you're gonna complete 15 in and out jumps. There's no weight on this, but once you start doing this inner thigh routine and you feel like the no weight is fairly easy, then go ahead and add a weighted plate to your chest or even hold dumbbells and really beast mode it out. You're at this triple set for four rounds. Once you complete that, you are all done with the inner thigh workout. I hope you guys enjoyed this workout. It is killer. I'm gonna insert the evil laugh here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But like I said, I did that two days ago and I am still sore. But I'm really glad I got to share that inner thigh workout with you guys. You guys are absolutely going to love it. I love being sore because I'm like, oh, I kicked my own butt. Like, yes, I love that feeling. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this workout, please leave a comment below. Please like this video if you guys want to see more videos like this. If there's a specific body part that you want to see, or if you want to know more information or the scientific, like, you know, my scientific knowledge behind why I do something, um, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I love um, reading all comments and replying back to you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you guys enjoyed these YouTube videos. I feel like I'm getting better, which is good. <laughs> Because at first I'm like, I don't really know this YouTube thing. This is new to me. So um, I love you guys and I will see you guys next time. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs>